In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the app called iMotion to make stop motion animation films. What we're going to start with is creating a new movie. So just starting here. And what's really important to first start out with is to make sure that your device is in the format that you want it to be. So right here, if your device is horizontal, you'll notice that it's at 1080 by 1920 pixels, which is standard rectangular video format. However, if I am to rotate my phone this way, then I'm going to have a square format with my video. Um, so that's important to note. So if maybe if you're uploading to Instagram or something in social media, square format's all right. However, if you're in YouTube, then obviously you want to have a rectangular format. Next, before we start, um, you'll notice that there's some buttons here for time lapse. So if you want your camera to automatically take photos for you, you can change the interval from anywhere from 0.1 seconds to taking a photo per day, which might be challenging for many of us with a phone. Um, so that's how you would work the time lapse. What we're going to be working with is manual mode. So I'm going to click on manual. Maybe I'll put in a movie title. If you have many movies, that might be helpful. And then we're ready to get started with our time lapse. So now we can see what's in front of us with our video. I'm going to just kind of put some props here really quickly. This will be a really great video. Um, to start with, we're going to look at the tools. So the first and probably most helpful tool that we have is something called Onion Skin, and that would be this square right here. So what Onion Skin does is it shows you the sort of ghost image of the picture that you just took. That way, if you accidentally bump your camera out of the way, you can line it up. So I can show you an example of that right now. So I'll take a picture and now you can kind of see that ghost image left over. That way you can make sure your movements are small and you can kind of work to line everything up. And if you need to stop for a day and go back, this will definitely help you a lot in terms of setting up your set again in the correct order. Um, some other options for helping you out, there's a light, so if you need a little spotlight on your work, you can add a light. Um, and then there's also this grid here to help you with composition and kind of keeping everything in a good area for your filming. Now that I'm all set up with my stop motion, um, I like to use these just little pieces of a 2x4 with a groove cut in them and I can slip my phone or whatever device I'm using into that groove. That way it's less likely to move around while I am shooting the film. Um, if you have a tripod, obviously that works really well too, but in this case, this is a really cheap solution to getting things to stay where you want them to. Um, so I'm going to start painting on this little canvas here, and I'm not really gonna make anything fancy, but. I'm just going to paint a mark, hit capture, and just slowly start adding on. Obviously, the smaller the increments are, the smoother the animation is going to look. And now I think while I'm painting, I'm going to start bringing in my other character here very slowly. So now I need to do two things at once. This is where having a helper can be pretty helpful. So make sure that you're moving everything that needs to be moved.
Once you've captured all of the frames that you need for your video, then we can move on to some other tools. So if we hit the back button, um, it's going to take us to this area where we can actually watch our video take place. And it looks like I may have gotten a frame of my face in there on accident. So if you happen to get a frame on accident where you don't want it to be, you can hit the play button and kind of go frame by frame until you get to the frame in question. And then right here, there's a little delete button. So if you just click that twice, it will delete one frame for you. So that's really great if you accidentally get your hand in a shot or something isn't really working the way you want it to go. Um, another great thing that you can see here is you can change the frames per second from anything from one frame per second to 30 frames a second. Uh, keep in mind that that helps with smoothness. So usually the faster the frames per second, the smoother the animation is. Um, so generally the slower it goes, the more jerky your animation looks. And that's really a matter of taste. Other things, um, if you want to continue from where you're at right here, you can stop at the last frame looks like I, there we go, it was stop at the last frame and then up here you'll hit the camera. Make sure you're still on manual and you can go back to resume and continue shooting your video. And then hit back if you want to go back to this tool section. Now that I'm all finished with my video, all I have left to do is export the video. Um, so we'll just hit export here and make sure you have video selected not photo, otherwise you're going to have, you know, like hundreds of photos go into your photo library. Um, I always just export to my photo library. There's, with the paid versions, you get other stuff, but this is easy enough for me. So I'll hit photo library and we watch it export. And when it's all finished, I'll have a video in my photo library that I can then edit and add credits to.